Rangeland soils are one of the most important factors when it comes to being able to uh, correctly control grazing management. So we're going to spend some time and you guys are going to get a crash course in soils. However, I highly encourage you, if you're going to go into rangeland management at all, to take one of Dr. Lyle's soils classes. Um, they're very, very beneficial. So just to make sure everybody's on the same page, soil um, official definition is um, a dynamic natural body of the surface of the earth w in which plants grow. So it's pretty general. Um, soils um, are really, really important when it comes to rangeland management because they are going to be the only entity that has the ability to actually grow plant material. So the most severe consequence of mismanagement um, is as, or overgrazing is the loss of soil. So it takes approximately a thousand years um, in a natural setting to get enough breakdown of granite and rock material to form one inch of topsoil. However, one inch of topsoil can be lost within a couple of years if improper grazing is actually in place. So we're going to just uh, go through a few of the basics of soils on rangeland. Just keep in mind that soils are going to be comprised of four major elements, minerals, organic materials, living forms, as well as pore space. Um, so the mineral content is going to be the largest and um, at about 45%. And um, the the air that is going to take up the space in between the particles are going to take, uh, equal about 20 to 30 percent. Um, water is going to also have about 20 to 30 percent total material, and then organic matter is going to be about five. So trampling um, by animals that are grazing rangeland um, has a very severe impact. So the timing of which trampling happens can actually have some detrimental effects on soil. So first of all, if we look at this figure out of um, Dr. Holacek's book, Undisturbed Soil is going to be a mixture of sand, silt, and clay. And this is going to be over here towards um, the left side of this figure. Um, however, if animals are turned in in high concentrations on soil, when it's dry, we start to see that undisturbed soil um, being broken up into smaller particle sizes just because of compaction. However, if we graze uh, that land when it's wet, then we can actually see um, very severe compaction taking place to where pour pores are not going to be uh, randomly dispersed. They're actually going to um, be dispersed very tightly next to one another, forming these uh, soil layers. And so that's what happens when soil that is wet um, gets trampled on in areas of high, high traffic areas. So one of the unique things about soil is that we can actually um, take this, uh, the soil that is trampled in high intensity situations, um, either when it's wet or dry, we can rest that pasture and it will eventually come back to the undisturbed soil profile. Um, so the architecture of the clay is then going to be made up of, um, those sand, silt, and clay modules and particles. And as we rest that pasture, that allows airspace to get back into uh, or in between the particles as well as creating space for water. So soils um, is, are going to be present in several different layers, which we call horizons. The first horizon is the topsoil. Um, we call that the A horizon. The second horizon is the evolution layer. That's called the E horizon. Third horizon is the B horizon, that's where we get subsoil, and our particle size starts getting bigger. And then the C horizon is um, right down in between, and lies in between the B horizon and the hard pan. Um, so, and then uh, finally the R horizon is really the bedrock, um, or the hard pan layer. So you can see um, in this picture over to the left, that or over to the right, that we have um, just a typical rangeland soil profile. The top 
uh, portion, the A horizon, isn't very deep. It's only about 20 centimeters. The B horizon um, is much deeper, um, and it's about uh, 40 to 48 uh, centimeters. And then we have the um, subsections of the B horizon, which we call B1 and B2. So just realize that as you start to see color differences um, within the soil horizon, that is going to be a direct result of the particle size within that horizon and um, a different soil type. So another um, figure out of Dr. Holacek's book shows uh, two soil profiles. Uh, the one on the left really is a shallow profile where we have uh, the A horizon is much larger up here at the, uh, at the top. The A horizon is going to be very, very rich in organic matter. And then the B horizon lies um, right below that where it, the color is going to change. You're going to see more deposits of calcium. And then the C horizon is where we start to get a lot of bigger um, particle materials. And in this figure... Um, Contradictory to the figure to your right, we have different plant types that are occupying different layers of the soil. So over here to the right, the soil profile are going to be the same um, as the one on the left, but we have different plants used, utilizing different areas of that soil. So our grasses are going to be much shallower, shallower rooted, and especially the annual grasses. So they're going to mainly get their nutrients from the uh, humus layer in the A horizon, and then our trees and our shrubs have deeper, woodier roots. They actually have the force to penetrate um, down into the B and sometimes the C horizon. So some important characteristics of soil are um, uh, listed here on this slide, ranging from texture clear down to mineral status. And texture really has to do with particle size, um, and that's where we're gonna. That's the first characteristic that we're gonna talk about. So particle size um, it can come in various uh, sizes of the soil particles, and I'm hoping this is not new news to you guys. But we've got clay all the way through to coarse gravel. So clay is going to have the smallest particle size um, and particles that are less than 0 0.002 millimeters are going to be classified as clay. And then we have lime, um, fine sand, coarse sand, and fine gravel clear up to coarse gravel that are going to be particles that are greater than 5 millimeters uh, in, in diameter. So clay, um, because it's so small, that's why we see, um, a lot of land with a really heavy clay load actually hold water. So that's why we see a lot of, uh, vernal pool action here in the Central Valley as Butte County has quite a bit of clay associated with its soil, um, which makes it good rice ground for farming and also makes it good uh, ground for creating vernal pools. So soil texture um, can be split up or determined based on the percentage of clay, silt, and sand in a sample. And so hopefully you guys have seen this figure before. So we have the percent clay that is going to be in um, a sample, the percent silt off to the right, and down here on the bottom the percent sand. So you can take a visual appraisal of what you think the percentage of clay, silt, and sand is, and basically follow each one of those percentages to, um, to the center, and that'll give you a soil texture. So if we have um, a clay, um, if we have a pretty heavy clay sample, 50% clay, and um, it's also 50% silt and 50% sand, then we're going to be in a pretty heavy clay region. Um, whereas some of our farming soil um, soils are going to be in uh, this loam area down here, so sand, sandy and silty loam um, are going to be really good for row crops. But of course, a lot of our rangelands don't have good soil like that. So a lot of the soils we see on rangeland are going to be uh, clay, sandy and silty clay, um, a little bit of loam here in California, but that is about it. So let's talk about soil texture a little bit. Um, texture really has to do with 
um, the shape of the particle and how close in association they are to one another. So if we have a soil sample that has very large particles versus one that has very small particles, water is going to run through the sample with large particles at a higher frequency. Um, therefore, the infiltration rate is very, very um, fast, but the holding capacity is very low. Whereas the opposite of that is where we um, is we're going to see that when we observe smaller particles because the water actually has more crevices and spaces to fill in soil samples with um, smaller particles. All right, so we will continue in the second part of this lecture um, with soil structure.